So this lesson deals with right triangular similarity. Um, and what we're talking about, we are talking about triangular similarity, or where that comes from, is if I take the um, point opposite the hypotenuse and I draw a line straight down so that it's perpendicular with this base, okay, um, what happens is I form three similar triangles. Okay? And the first one, obviously, um, is the original triangle that we had here, where it was E. F and G. Okay, but then I can take this line here and I split it into two different triangles. So I have this one. And then I have the small one. Okay. So all three of these triangles, it turns out, are similar. So we can use proportions and the things we've talked about in the previous lessons uh, to find different measurements of these. So that's what we're going to look at. All right, so now I'm going to show you kind of what I mean um, by finding, inserting some numbers in here and I want just to find the value of x. All right, so these sides are proportional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, or the triangle is proportional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this triangle right here and kind of rotate it around so that it's facing the same way as this triangle here. So, um, I kind of put H up here on top. Right, so, my four is going to go here. And my X is going to go here. Right, so, this would be G and this would be F. I kind of flipped it and rotated it. Right, so, solving my proportions, I would say X is to. This x would go to the 3, as this hypotenuse, the 4, would go to this hypotenuse of the main triangle, which is 5. Okay, so um, cross multiplying this is going to give me 5x is equal to 12. If I divide by 5, that tells me x is 12 over 5, which would reduce to 2.4 if you turn, turn that into a decimal. It was called a geometric mean, um, and that says for any positive numbers, A and B, I can uh, find a number, and we'll call that number X, so that A over X is equal to X over B. Okay, and so if I uh, kind of cross multiply this out. That tells me that x squared is equal to a times b. Uh, so um, geometric mean of 24 and 48 is what we're looking for. So I know that the geometric mean of x squared is equal to a times b. Uh, so here's my a and b. So I know x squared is equal to 24 times 48. So that means that if I take the square root of everything, x is equal to the square root times of 24 times 48. Now in this case, I did multiply these together because I can factor 24, 48 into 24 times 2. Right? And since I have 24 times 24, um, I know that this is going to create a pair. So this is going to come out of this square root. So I'm going to have 24 square roots of 2. So the geometric mean of 24 and 48 is 24 square root of 2. We can use geometric means to find or solve problems using right triangles. What happens is if I take uh, the opposite vertex and go straight down towards the hypotenuse at a 90 degree angle, uh, it splits up the triangle like we talked about earlier. But it turns out there's a formula I can use if I let that be y, and I let this be um, 
let's say four, and this becomes five, just some random number so we can set this up. But using geometric mean, it turns out that I can solve this by setting y squared equal to four times five. Okay, so uh, y squared would be 20. So then y would be equal to the square root of 20. And if I factor this and simplify it out, it's going to be 4 times 5, or the square root of 4 times square root of 5. 4 is a perfect square, so that tells me that y is going to equal to 2. That's the square root of 4. And then the 5 doesn't simplify, so it stays inside the radical. And so y would equal 2 square roots of 5. Okay. So if I give you the height, or the height squared is equal to the product of these two smaller um, segments. The next case would be if I give you one of these legs here uh, to solve for, and I say I call this x. Um, you kind of look at this height as dividing the triangle. So whatever number is here, okay, that's the number we're going to use. So it's going to be x squared is equal to 4. Now, we're not going to multiply. I'll put that 5 back up there. We're not going to multiply 4 times 5 because that's going to give us this one. What ends up happening is that you have to take the 4 and the 5, and you add them to get that entire distance. 4 plus 5 is 9, so the way we find x, this long leg here, is we're going to take the 4, because that's the side, the 4 is on the side where the x is at, and then we times it by 9, by the entire length of the hypotenuse. So that gives us 36, so that tells us x squared is equal to 36, and then x is going to equal the square root of 36, all right, since we're talking about length, we're going to take that as the square root of 36 is just 6. Okay. All right. The other instance would be is if I, instead of putting it on this leg, if I put it over here on this leg, um, and let's call this one z, okay, then it turns out that it's going to be z squared is going to equal to 5, since z is on the right side and so is the 5 of the, the height. So then, um, again, we're going to have to add the 4 and the 5 to get the 9. So I'm, in this case, if I want this leg, I'm going to have to do 5 times 9, which is 45. And so I want z squared is 45. We want the square root of z. Okay, so that's the square root of 45. If I simplify this, it's going to be 9 times 5. The square root of 9 is 3. The 5 stays inside, so that's 3 square roots of 5. The other example that I want to show you is if we don't put the variable here, here, or here, but if we put the variable somewhere on this side, let's say we put the x here, and let's say that I tell you this side here is 4 square root of 2, and I put an 8 right here, and we want to solve for x. Okay, well, if you remember, it's always the height squared, so I'm still going to do that. It's going to be 4 square root of 2 squared is equal to 8 times x. So when I square this, um, remember that's going to be 4 square roots of 2 times 4 square roots of 2. Okay. Um, this is going to be 16. 4 times 4 will be 16. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2, so it becomes 16 times 2, which is 32. Okay. So I know 8x is 32 divided by 8 tells me that x is 